Is it the right way round? It's the right way round. 39 people. Adam Ross, I gave you a shout out last time. You can only have a whisper out now. <laughs> okay. Well, I could use this time to check that our sound is okay, to check that my, I just say, hello everyone. Let us know if you can't hear us. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but do it anyway. Well, if you get no response, you have to <laughs> guess that you can't. How are we doing on time? We are two minutes to seven. Oh. They hear us. Seven o'clock? Is it? Thirty seconds to seven. How precise are we being? Uh oh, what have I done? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Just messing. <laughs> Thought I'd lost everybody's comments, but they've come back. Well the hoover again. <laughs> I am a hooligan. Okay. 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 Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming. And hopefully, by now, you'll have to come back. We're coming back. Um. Yes. <laughs> you need to be very wary of doing So, why did you do it? What did because you need I to... Because I can't zoom out. <laughs> why not? I don't know. I've zoomed in and now you're stuck. Extreme close-up. Oh, let's have a look. And when I try and zoom out, I've destroyed the comments. I lost the comments. Mm. That's okay, isn't it? Is that okay? Yeah. Good. But you're without the comments, are you? No, I've got the comments. Okay. Um, it's like a farce. I'm like a farce. Right. <laughs> Thank you for being there. Thank you. And, yeah, hopefully we've got it nailed this time. I don't want to tempt the fates, but there you go. So, this is the sketch minus this piece and I'm what I've done here since we last year is I quickly sketched in some of the pathways here and some of the foliage and I did it just with water so the sort of uh, drapery of foliage the hint of bushiness that's all done with water and now I'm going to start doing really what watercolor does best which is painting in some shadow so I'm, I'm going to do that and the color I'm using is essentially uh, blue or greeny blue but when it's painted on the green it shouldn't it shouldn't show up as too blue
I've been asked to zoom in and I don't think that that's a serious request. Currently the painting fills the entire screen. Okay, well that's good, isn't it? It is good. We can see very clearly what you're doing. Good. Okay, so I'm at, what I'm doing right now is putting a bit of shadow here. And the shadow has to have gaps in it so that indicative of light coming between the leaves the sketch um, from another existing work of yours Roger or is that new for this? This piece was, mm. this wasn't so it's a little bit you know when I'm sketching I often sort of borrow from other places and add it in but drop them out later Zoom, I'm going to do an extreme close up on these brush strokes. Ah, oh. <laughs> okay. questions since I zoomed in so close that's because everything is so clear that nobody is confused oh someone asks is this watercolour on top of watercolour it's watercolour on top of watercolour yeah except um, when I was working here a bit and when I did this when it was just water so it's water on watercolour and watercolour on watercolour Yes, it, it, you can't see much when I'm painting water on this, but it, it means that I can make a softer line. And I guess one of the things about watercolour is you can easily choose between a soft line and a hard line. What weight of paper are you using? Um... In grams, it's 640, nearly 650. And I forget what that is in um, pounds. I'll check. 300 and something pounds there. Weirdly, um, the weight of paper in grams is always the same. If you have um, paper that's like this, that's 600 grams um, wherever you see that it'll always weigh the same it'll always be the same thickness but for some bizarre reason um, if you're talking pounds it isn't always the same because the um, the pound weight sometimes refers to a certain size of paper as opposed to the certain thickness of paper only and the combination of the two means it varies, so it's complicated. So I, I tend to think, although I mostly don't think in metric, in terms of paperweights I do, because it's more consistent. Do you use 
use a spray fixer tip over the top? No, as a general rule, no. If I was working in pastel, which I like, but I have never done it much, I've done a very small amount, um, then I would, but not with watercolour. You can touch it, it's okay, but it is vulnerable. And so when I finish, I would tend to put glass over a, a watercolour painting and frame it, where I wouldn't always with, a, with an acrylic. Is it hot pressed or cold pressed paper? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, hot pressed paper tends to be very smooth and this is very rough. So it's very rough. But I've, yeah. Um, are you familiar with the illustrator David Grove? David? David Grove. Aha, uh -huh. um, you've got a pencil and paper. Write it down and I'll check it out. Okay. I don't think so, but yes, I will definitely investigate. Apparently he primarily did a lot of pulling out from an already painted background, sometimes in oil. Ah. Oh. I'll okay. write down his name. Well, I definitely think I have a lot of scope for learning when it comes to watercolour. Um, in the past, distant past, 30, 40 years ago, I did a lot of painting in watercolour, but it was not, it was n not like watercolour. I didn't, you know, work on wet canvas. I worked on... Um, you know, a very tight drawing and I used the watercolour in a manner that was very, very tight. Um, so this is much looser and frankly a lot more fun. You've been asked again why did you choose watercolour for this project? Um, because I've done several watercolour paintings for them and it's it's a kind of yeah it's becoming something I like to do for them I, I don't do a lot so whenever I get the opportunity now I like to do it um, obviously I can paint any way I like but um, so I could choose to do a lot of watercolours but I do prefer if that's the correct word, to work in acrylic. I like working with light as opposed to working in the shadows, which sounds weirdly, um, I don't know, philosophical approach. It, it isn't really, it's just, it's just a preference. What type of watercolour brush do you use? Not sure. Oh, this is a pro art brush. Um, I do, and I have bought a lot of sable hair brushes from way back in the 60s and 70s, and I still have them all. So I still use them occasionally. The finer ones are in not good shape, um, so they're hard to use. You've been asked again what's this painting for okay this painting is for Jeff Downs and Chris Braid in the Downs Braid Association their fourth album and it's called Holding the Heavens but I started figuring out what I wanted to do when I thought it was going to be called <laughs> my mind's gone blank what was the original title? Yeah, Halcyon. When it was going to be called Halcyon. So the Greek myths of Halcyon are many and there's lots of different versions of it. Um, but one of them involves 
the notion of making a calm space in a stormy sea in the middle of winter so the kingfisher can uh, make a nest and lay her eggs. And I thought that I would include a kingfisher in this. So this is a sketch I've done of a kingfisher and that will be incorporated into the title and logo rather than into the painting. So it'll be a separate piece. Do you ever use a mull stick? I have done. Um, uh, and it, yeah, it's, they have their role. They, they're definitely, I don't know, it was quite recently I last used um, a mask. No more than two months ago. you do when you're not painting? <laughs> I mean like having lunch and watching TV, that kind of what do I do? <laughs> I assume so. Um, I, I feel that too little of my time is taken up painting. I would rather it was more. Um, but right now I'm very excited because quite a bit of my time is spent figuring out how we're going to deal with moving the prototype architecture and you know getting architectural projects back happening. So that's exciting and I would say that's the one thing that really you know if I'm not painting but I'm doing that then I'm feeling good. If I'm not painting and I'm sorting out tax and accounts yeah, that doesn't please me at all. You know, things like that have to be done, but it's it's no fun. Okay, at the moment I'm just kind of hinting at what might be. listen to music and if so what what when I'm painting yeah I, I tend to listen to stories if I was on my own that's what I would be doing now I'd be listening to stories not not music so much I listen to music a lot though but what that says to me is I spend a lot of time not painting Listening to a particular story at the moment. Um, I'm listening to the end of um, Stephen King's story called Dreamcatcher. Okay. Do you find it easy to concentrate on a story whilst painting? I find it almost impossible to paint if I'm concentrating on the painting I have to I have to concentrate on something else Do you ever get tired of answering the same questions over and over again? No No, don't worry Definitely not Do you ever use mixed media with watercolours such as ink or or are you a purist? Apologies for my pronunciation. Do I ever use mixed media? Definitely. 
although less so. Um, I used to a lot. Um, to the extent that the gallery in San Francisco felt it was pretty safe to describe all my paintings as mixed media, which wasn't quite true, but there was, you know, for example, Relaire, I would paint the background in watercolour and I often jokingly said it's painted with so little colour it's barely dirty water. But to make the foreground come very much more into the foreground, I worked in ink. Now, and that works, you know, it brings the foreground forward very sharply. But to, if I was doing that painting today, I'd probably not do that because you can get layers of aerial perspective without changing media. How did you get to have such great understanding of layers of colours? How did I what? Understanding of layers of colours. So this person feels that in, in their work they have trouble visualising how colours sit on other colours. Do you have any tips? Um, sometimes it doesn't work and you just redo it. So yeah, be re be happy to make a mistake and work over it. It's, yeah, definitely. I never get it right every time, that's for sure. What paint formula did you use for your marbling experiments? I can't really tell you the chemical because the... Um, Sorry? Because you'd have to kill them. <laughs> no, because I bought canisters of paint that were simply marked enamel. Now, the manufacturers, that we're talking a long time ago, I, you know, this is stuff I did back in the late 60s, uh, and the manufacturers would have had their own interpretation of enamel. And, you know, I, when I was at college, I tended to think of enamel as molten glass. And clearly I wasn't working in molten glass, but it had enamel on the can. And I, I, I rather regret that I didn't make a note of exactly the chemicals that were in the can. I mean, I would have been interested, so it wouldn't have been just to answer questions, but I didn't. So unfortunately, I don't know. What I do know, though, is it um, it was not water-based, and therefore, I think if it was, as it probably was, an oil-based paint, it floated on water, and that's the key to marbling. It has to be able to float on water. When I was... Um, doing the marbling, I used very little water, at most, you know, less than a millimeter, and sometimes just a damp surface. Whereas proper marbling, you can actually use a great deal more. You can, you know, make a bath full of water and just have a thin film of marbling mixture on the surface, because it only needs to interact with the surface so the depth of water, it doesn't really matter. Is the sound working okay today? It seems to be. We've had no complaints, so <laughs> I think no need to Okay, complaints. so either a much politer audience or it's actually working. Do you apply a varnish on your completed acrylic paintings? Sorry? Do you apply a varnish on your completed acrylic paintings? I have been tempted, but never have. And the reason I've been tempted is that I've m used a mixture of paints. Um, they're all the same manufacturer. Well, no, that's not quite right. But they should all be 
very similar chemically. But some colors um, tend to produce a gloss finish and some a matte finish. And my paintings, if you get the angle right, you can see the difference between the matte and the um, gloss. And I've been tempted to use either a matte or gloss varnish to even it up, but I never, never have, never got round to doing that. Oh, we've got lots of kind words on the sound and also my brilliant production values. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first. <laughs> Good. I'm very glad to hear it. Thank you, everyone. Um, who are your art heroes, Roger? <laughs> well, I don't know. I like different people for different things. Um, there's an artist I really like because he has an incredible instinct for design, and that's Michael Kaluta. Um, and a colleague of his, who sadly has died, uh, Jeffrey Jones, who died as Catherine Jeffrey Jones. Um, he really introduced me to the idea that oil painting could be something amazing. Alan Lee, of course, is, is, an, is an absolute master of watercolour. And I guess, you know, uh, I'm talking about artists who are more or less around now, but there are artists who, from previous centuries, who I like, Again, all kinds of different reasons. What watercolour paint do you use? I'm using... I have said this before, but I'll say it again. It's called Martin Graham. And What's amazing about it is it's an incredibly intense colour. I used to use Old Holland, which were expensive, but what made them good was they were ground very, very fine. The main difference between that and this is that Old Holland has got um, gum arabic as a base, and this has honey as a base and the honey makes for a much more intense colour. It, it brings problems with it, that's why everyone doesn't do it, but it does work very well. Do you use the algae method? What's that? I mean, you're asking me, and I'm asking you. Well, I, I don't know. I've not heard okay. it, so I, I wouldn't know. I, I would say it's unlikely because I haven't heard of it, which is an indication of my ignorance. Is it spelt the same way as the car? It's spelt A-L-G-A-E, as oh, okay. in pond matter. Oh, okay. Um, no, I, I've not heard of that. I'll check it out. Okay. you seen the work by Carl Larsson, early 20th century Swedish painter? Yes, yes. Brilliant. But that, that's a good example of someone who uses watercolour very precisely, which is what I used to do back when I did paintings like the second Asia album, Asia Alpha, and of course Relaire and Tales. 
it was very precise. Um, his work, is, I like his work. But now, nowadays, I like working looser. And one of the nice things about working looser is I get more surprises. And sometimes they're bad surprises, but very often they're not. Very often I go, oh, okay, that's working. I hadn't expected that, but it's working. So, yeah. Yeah, I liked his work. And what I'm doing now is I'm just staring at it. Um, I'm looking at, okay, I kind of made the edge of a pond here by having reflections. And I need to bring that right across into here. So I will be doing that. And I'm looking in here. And I, the shadow is very cold, which it should be. But this, although this is very dark, I'm feeling it could be warmer. So I might, at some point, give it, soak it and give it a, a wash of a warm colour, like an orange or something. And that'll settle into it and that'll, that'll look interesting. And it may work. <laughs> but I'll definitely try it. I've been told that algae is for floating a paper on colours. Ah, okay. Not being an artist, I just relay the words robotically and hope that it makes sense when it reaches your ears. <laughs> what it does say to me is it's something I ought to find out more about. So when I say, oh, okay, I'm thinking... That sounds interesting. It doesn't mean I understand fully. It just means, ah, I'll have a look at that. Hmm. What problems does a honey base propose? This, um, this week, we removed from the prototype house there was an ancient well i say ancient the prototype has been parked in an industrial estate for i don't know how long maybe 15 years it could be that long which is a scary thought um maybe longer anyway it's we have to move it and it has to be dismantled into five or so segments but no one could start working on it because this um, beehive there was a, a hole in the outer skin and the, it, there was bees swarming all around it this summer so we had to save the bees but remove them so we had a bee expert in there and I was filming it and they told me to keep 50 yards away <laughs> which I did, but I couldn't film it. And in the end, they took pity on me and gave me a bee suit so I could tog up and move closer, which I did. But I still got swarmed. I didn't get bitten, but I did get bees all over me. And, and that's what happens if you're painting in their vicinity in what might be termed a very dilute honey you'll have visitors that might not be peaceful. That's a minor problem with it. Seeing as I don't paint outside, the issue is much less, so I'm not even doesn't even cross my mind. I have to apologise that halfway through that lovely monologue I accidentally turned the camera onto my own face. And I promise it's not because I'm an attention seeking actor. <laughs> it was a genuine mistake. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera is now back on you. Well, I'm sure they enjoyed it. I'm going to temporarily move away from this area and see if I can start making... far side of the pond shape up a bit more. Oh, 
are you familiar with Edmund Dulac? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have um, a number of his books here, and um, I did have Life of the Bee that he illustrated, but uh, I, who was it who wrote it? Maeterlinck, I think, was the author of Life of the Bee, but I may be wrong. I'm doing it from memory, but my elder daughter, Sally, actually has a beehive and I gave her the copy of that book but I have a couple of other of his books and not far from here in Rottingdean which is about eight miles away uh, for a while Rudyard Kipling lived in Rottingdean and before he went to Bateman's I guess um, and the Rottingdean library has a whole bunch of Detmold originals they were twins, there were two of them. And they've got a lot of the originals from Jungle Book. Very beautiful they are. Very wor well worth a visit if that's not too much effort. Yeah, there were a lot of really fantastic illustrators in that late Victorian, early Edwardian period. And I used to love collecting those books when I had more shelf space back, back then. Hmm. How important is it to you to stay close to your sketch reference? Uh, say that again, sorry. How Im oh, how important is it that you stay close to your sketch reference? Not at all. Not at all. It's only a guide, you know. If I have a better idea, I'll change it. If my brain has gone to sleep, I can just carry on anyway because I've got a guide. So... <laughs> It's a, that's all it is. It's just a kind of um, a prompt. It's not. It's not um, gospel. Do you browse a lot in the Lewis bookshops? Um, I always find a book sh bookshops an attraction. Yes, yeah. I guess not a lot, but yeah, whenever I get a chance, yeah. Do you? Um, do you know, I'm actually recently quite an avid believer in borrowing instead of keeping. So I do actually use, or I did use till lockdown, the library quite a lot. What do you do? Think about Kindle books and things like that. No, I couldn't get into Kindle books. I know it's it's a good idea and it saves trees but I've got to have that tactile experience of holding the paper in my hand okay well you must have read a hell of a lot of books when you were doing your degree I've certainly tried to I was certainly supposed to <laughs> well 
How many do you think you read in there? What was it, three years or four years? Three years. We were actually set an essay every week with a reading list of about ten books, but not the whole books all of the time. Okay. Sometimes excerpts. So was it more than, well, less than ten books a week, more than one book a week? Yeah, definitely. I had to have a break of, of reading after that. I had to rediscover reading for fun. <laughs> okay. But presumably you enjoyed your subject. I did, yes. It's very interesting. Do you work more in the negative space when painting or watercolour? Yeah. Yes. Yes, because basically with watercolour, you, you're painting the shadow. So this is what is what I'm doing. If I was doing this in acrylic, I'd have painted all the dark bits and then I'd have been bringing out where the light falls rather than where the shadow is. So it's, it's an interesting thing because it's, I have to think differently, or not even think, but I have to act differently. I have to treat the environment differently. And I enjoy it. I enjoy that. I enjoy the fact that it's not just a different way of doing it, but it's a different way of seeing it. So, yeah, that's, that works for me. So what I'm doing here is, is putting a shadow on the shadow. So there's a tree now coming up much more in the background than the first one. Is the first painting of the Yes Live you did going to be, the video of the first painting going to be released? Ah. Well, you can watch it all, I think, on YouTube. It's never been edited into a more concise version, which it, we should, because there's lots of stuff that wasn't in it, like um, a, a stop frame. I had a stop frame camera on it. So we might do that, yeah. But in the meantime, as I say, th there is... Um, the possibility of seeing that actual process on YouTube. And it, will there be a print released on your website? Ah, well, we are in the wonderfully fortunate position of having requests for quite a lot of prints. So. In a nutshell, we'll do them all at some point. But yeah, if there's enough interest, we will. But in a way, there's a kind of a cue for prints that I should do and I will address first. But yeah, eventually it will be a print, I'm sure. I like the way it came out. Is there a watercolour equivalent for zinc white and titanium white? Um, yes, but they don't work as effectively because, you, you know, you, I think it's called Chinese white, the white for watercolour. It doesn't just sit on the paint, it absorbs the underlying paint, so it stains. Um, if the best way to get a light area is basically to give the painting a bit of a scrub. You know, I, I need to connect the highlight. I didn't want that piece there isolated by shadow. So what I'll do is use a stiff brush and scrub it away. So I would do that first. It's not precise though, so if I was doing 
wanted to put a highlight in an eye, then I might use it. Do you ever rest your hand on the painting? What, when I'm doing watercolour? Yeah, I think in general. No, no. Well, hmm, I can. Where it's dry, it doesn't matter. But this is a marl stick. And it works on a canvas. Okay. Just behind there, it's solid. So I can rest it there and I can paint like this. And, you know, it's, it's essential sometimes to get a steady hand. So that's what I use. I use it more on acrylic paintings, though, than on watercolours, because watercolours tend to be small enough that I can rest my hand somewhere else. I'm working on an easel here, which is, yeah, the last dozen or so watercolours I've done on an easel. But prior to that, I didn't. I did them on a desk. So there's lots of space to do things like resting your hand. You've been asked if you'd design a children's playground. If, if I have or if I would? I think like if you would and what, what that might look like. Well, the answer to that is um, I would. And I have several times. Um, when I was at the Royal College of Art, I was approached by somebody who was representing the chairman of a company called Mother Care, whose child had been sick in hospital, and they wanted to donate a playground for the children at the hospital and I was asked to design one so I did and I think that design or at least a sketch or two of it is in the book Views and I had another approach similar situation maybe I don't know 20 years later probably and that design ended up in the second book Magnetic Storm so, so I have done it. None have been built, but I have done it. One of the things I'm doing now is I'm working here so this can dry, then I'll work here while that dries. So it gives me a lot more flexibility. And it may not look it, it may look like hardly anything's happened, but very often in paintings it does evolve painfully slowly but in my mind it is evolving so it's kind of um, I suppose the word I would use is coming together it's shaping up what I was doing there with the water was softening it because it looked disproportionately hard-edged compared to the rest, although that was a legitimate position for something, you know, shadows to look hard actually. Yeah, I'm, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to be able to essentially sculpt a way around this, a way for the eye to go in find the pathways, travel around, but I need to warm it up too. It has a, um, it's getting increasingly cold and I need to warm it. So I'm going to have to think of a way of successfully doing that. Somebody asked me last time when I was painting what my favourite film was and I kind of got stuck on that and um, 
didn't really address that issue much. Have you been thinking about that all week? <laughs> top ten, <laughs> writing your top ten lists? Not really, not really thinking about it that way. But I was thinking about it as eras. And um, I remember when I was at the Royal College of Art, my brother was at Central College of Art and he ran the Film Society there. And he just chose movies he liked. So I saw a lot of movies like Hidden Fortress, which is a Kurosawa movie, and um, Seven Samurai. I saw a bunch of Kurosawa movies and they were amazing. But I also saw films like Ingmar Bergman's, is it Ingmar Bergman's? Bergman's, anyway, um, Seventh Seal. And I love that. And a film called The Saragossa Manuscript. So I was just thinking that probably because it got me at the right time, that the imagination in those films really impressed me. So I would say that um, some of those samurai movies, there's a movie called Samurai Rebellion, incredibly beautifully constructed uh, camera work, amazing. A kind of an amazingly sophisticated and but tragic story, but a lot of Japanese films were tra fairly tragic. Uh, a lot of them were stunningly beautiful too. Um, there's a couple of samurai films that are in a way the opposite to what you'd expect in films like Seven Samurai. There's one called After the Rain and it's it's about issues of morality and honour and surprisingly tranquil and peaceful movie but, but again very beautiful. So there was a lot of films that I was attracted to by heading over across London to watch them at the Central College of Art. Martin did originally show the films within the college and then he seems to do, have done a deal of some kind with Ballet Rambach who had a, their own theatre in the adjacent building and then he started showing films there. So I did go spend a lot of time at least once a week heading across London to, to the Central to see movies and that was great I loved that and all those films it's hard to tell how good they were but they were they created a big impression on me at the time. And I guess through Freya, I remember sitting with her when she was very little watching a Disney film and I was appalled. I thought, my God, is this the best that children get to be offered? And around about that time, I saw the first... Studio Ghibli film and I think it was called Nausicaa, Warriors of the Wind and I was thunderstruck about how beautiful it was and I became a big fan of the Ghibli films um, probably my all time favourite children's animation is My Neighbour Totoro I thought it was a fabulous film I liked, you know, Spirit of the Way and other films he made I would say you can't really go wrong with the Ghibli movies. They are brilliant. I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> Good. Would you say that's where Freya got her kindling love of Japan? Ah, I hadn't thought of that. I hadn't thought of that. Maybe, maybe. I mean, she did grow up with I had a fairly enthusiastic re reaction to a lot of things Japanese I did kendo for many many years when she was little and growing up and she got to go to the dojo a few times and I love things everything all kinds of artistic aspects of Japanese life from flower arranging and gardening I've got a lot of books on Japanese gardens yeah 
the, I love the aesthetic of Japan. You know, there's issues as well. It's not all wonderful, but a lot about it is wonderful. Yeah, maybe, because she was brought up on Ghibli. They didn't come out often enough, though. <laughs> they would have needed one a week to be to have satisfied her the lust for the, those films. Actually, that's not true. She was perfectly happy when she was very young to watch them again and again and again and again. I remember when we were sent um, the first copy. A friend of mine from Japan sent me a Japanese version of the Princess Mononoke. And I remember watching that with Frere. Didn't even have subtitles. So <laughs> we didn't understand really what was going on and it didn't matter, we just watched it. Now she would know because she can speak Japanese relatively fluently. But at the time, it was it didn't matter. It was just a beautiful film. I can't say she ever got a taste for the Japanese samurai movies. So. Uh oh. That's what I think. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> I mean, I know when I would watch them, she'd say, "Oh God, Dad, black and white movies with subtitles." Well, to me, I'm, I'm doing a lot of just staring. And when I am just staring, ideas keep going through my mind. How I'm going to deal with this, how I'm going to deal with that. And in my mind, it's coming together much quicker than it is there. But eventually, it will translate to there. So I'm feeling that it's, it's kind of going where I want it to go. You've been asked what percentage of the time you spend looking and what percentage painting. There's no way of knowing. There's no way of knowing. I've got a painting downstairs that's been on an easel and I've sort of looked at it every day, probably. I started it and made good progress on it before Freya was born. So it's been around, ooh, well... Possibly 35 years, more probably. And every now and again I do a bit. And I like that space, space, that speed, that pace. That works on that picture, that works for me. Um, I did have a very kind client who said, if I never touch it again, he would buy it. That doesn't mean he would buy it if I kept working on it. And I said, well, really, I'm doing it for me, so I probably will keep working on it. This won't take that long. <laughs> it's, it won't take that long because it's sort of working now in my head. It's, when it's coming down to just the labour of doing the work, that's, a, that's the easy bit. Then I can put on a story disconnect and just let muscle memory do the work so what I'm doing when I stare at it I'm just saying yeah that looks like that that works that way this works that way it, it's it's also fun I think I love looking at my pictures and so it, it kind of necessary for me to do this We've kind of run over, haven't we? Because they're supposed to be 45 minutes. Oh, are they? Oh, I thought they were an hour. Yeah, we've <laughs> run way over. Well, I can work on a little bit. <laughs> well, there we go. Yes, we are. But um, I've been asked, can I do a close-up pan around the painting before we go? Yeah. But yes, Roger says I confidently that I can. I mean, I can try without tripping anyone over. Oh, you mean you're wondering if you can do it physically? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> no. What? Why would it be difficult? Well, it's a good question, but you know, why would going live on Facebook be difficult? <laughs> <laughs> Well, to people who know how to do it, they probably think it isn't, but there you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm being told that these are an hour and I'm not supposed to believe you. Oh, okay. Fair news. <laughs> right. Here's a close-up pan. And I think I... Am I right to say that we'll put a picture up, a close-up picture? Well, let's move this out of the way. T to me, it makes more sense standing back, but you can go in as close as you like. Well, I'll try both. We've got a bit standing back. It's like we're in the forest. Okay, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me because um, we will finish about now if you have any last questions. Otherwise, send in your questions and we will do a recorded um, Q&A. Um, Christabel and I are going to sit down here perhaps and go through the questions. This morning I went through a number of questions with Freya on Zoom and that kind of worked. Um, we had problems with the sound, but that hasn't been posted. So, and as sound is so often a problem, um, I think we might do that again and get the sound spot on. And it wasn't a question of recording the sound wasn't the problem. It was me hearing. Freya kept cutting out and I couldn't hear what she was saying. But I think we've nailed that, so we might do that again. So there will be more Q and A's. So if you didn't get your question answered, or you wanted a more detailed one, write them in, and we'll we'll do a recorded Q and A. Thank you very much for coming. It's been an honour. Thank you.